Hey guys, so we're in Lightroom and we're going to go over what I wish I knew when I started Lightroom. So we're going to work our way down this right hand side and when we come down, we come to blacks. So people talk about crushing the blacks and lifting the blacks to get a fade. And I went, okay, I want a fade, so I'm going to lift the blacks. And I thought it was doing a little bit of a fade, but that's not what you want to get a fade. You want to come down here and create your fade in the curves and lift the blacks in the curves and you'll get a much nicer fade and you want to decrease crush your blacks on the bar here and that's what's going to give you the best fade because if you lift the blacks here you're actually bringing out the detail in the shadows you don't want that that's how you would go about recovering or getting back some detail in the shadows whereas the curve is going to give you a fade so that's that and moving down vibrance and saturation what's the difference between vibrance and saturation so if we bring vibrance all the way up to 100 you can see her face is a little a little yellow and then if we do the same with saturation you can now see her face is very yellow and what's happening is Vibrance only affects the midtones, so bringing it up, her face isn't overly yellow because her face is considered a highlight. This is a portrait, so her face is very well exposed. But saturation affecting the whole entire image equally, so it's not overly important, but it really frustrated me. So. It's something I wish I knew. And moving on, I wish when I made a change, so say we make a change, we want to increase the highlights. And to quickly see what I've done, I can toggle by pressing the dash key just above the enter button on a Mac. I used to have to come down here and view my changes by hitting this over and over. So that's very helpful. And I also wish I knew, say if we made a change in our curves, I could just switch this button here on and off and I could see the difference from before and after just for my curves, only affecting my curves. You can do it for each, each section. So that's very handy. And then moving on, I wish I knew how to use this button here so say if we wanted to affect her face we could go about it grabbing the orange the luminance of the orange and trying to figure out which colors affect what but what you can do is just click on here go over to her face click on her face drag it down and it's already selected the colors for you it's figured it out for you so that makes it much much easier you can do it on saturation and luminance so let's try this photo say if you wanted to grab the purples change the purples you don't have to try to figure it out how much magenta how much purple just grab this grab the color and drag and as you can see it had a lot of blue in it which which is really making a difference and you do it with saturation and luminance and that's very very handy and the other thing I wish I knew so as default Lightroom will have this look to it and you want to edit on a white background and why is that important because when you put your photo online it's most likely going on Instagram or a website with a white background. So that's very important to consider because if we raise our whites of our image too high, what happens is your picture just fades off into the background. I mean, if you were really creative, you could maybe create something quite cool, but you don't want that. You want to edit on a white background so you know when your whites are getting too white and 
doesn't fade off into the background. So that's very important. All you do is do a double, a two finger click to get this up and then you can change it. And moving on, I wish I knew how to use the red, green and blue channels of the RGB curve. So if we get red, and this is a little more advanced, it's probably up there in the most advanced tools in Lightroom because you just need to have a knowledge of how your colors work with each color. Because with the colors green, blue and red, you can effectively make any combination you want really if you know what you're doing by just dragging them in the right directions. But it takes a lot of practice to learn how the colors will affect each other. So I'm going to make a really quick, nice golden one by putting red in the shadows, a little bit of red in the highlights, a little bit of green in the shadows, a little bit of green in the highlights, and blue in the shadows, and then a little blue out of the highlights, and it gives us a nice golden, a nice golden look. And I also want a bit of blue in the midtones, so it's not affecting her face too much. And now we have a nice looking warm image, for example. Even some in the highlights. And this is just an example. And then what I wish I knew was how to make a LUT. So say if we wanted to save this, it's just this little button here. Very, very easy. Now you just call your LUT whatever. And then you choose what aspects you want to save into your LUT. So you most likely don't want exposure. You can keep white balance if that's part of your image. If that's how you went about creating your look for your LUT, then you'll want it ticked. And you won't want any graduated filters or radio filters, and you'll most likely want these ones. So then you go ahead and create it, and it appears just right here. So it's super, super easy and super effective and saves a lot of time and moving on is how to use a reference photo so say if we're editing two similar photos and we wanted to get them exactly the same I wish I used utilized having a reference photo more so all you do is click on this R and A button here and drag your photo up into it and it's that easy and it's very helpful I wish I utilized that a little more earlier on and moving on to the next thing I wish I knew is sharpening so most people will just grab the sharpening and bring it up to 50 and the image is sharp well that's not the best way to do it because say if we sharpen it a lot and then if you zoom in this image isn't the best image to show it so if we bring up try it in this image and we look at our sky it's very grainy We've got all these little dots in our sky which just isn't obviously isn't what you want so what you can do is grab this masking slider and press alt so holding alt at the same time now you can select what it is you want sharpened so as I slide it to the right it's selecting the larger lines rather than the small lines and now it's not selecting our sky so we just want the big lines to have the most sharpening because if we sharpen the real little stuff that's what gives us those little grains in the sky which is completely unnatural and doesn't look nice and soft so let's bring it really really far up don't have to go all the way up I mean 60 is going to be plenty maybe sharpening down to 30 or so and now we can just see what it's sharpening it's sharpening most of the image but leaving leaving the really flat bits all alone and keeping our sky nice and noise free compared to before and that's very very helpful so and the next thing 
is everyone loves an orange and teal look. So I wish I knew sliding this is going to give you a very, very quick orange and teal look. It's not the best orange and teal look. You obviously want to do more adjusting, but that's this slider here is very powerful if you're looking towards doing a slight orange and teal look or a very strong orange and teal look you want to be moving this one down here and that's very helpful right and the next thing I wish I knew was graduated filters so this image here I was always asking myself how do those people get such soft light and a real haze to their photo and it just looked awesome and I did a lot of research couldn't figure it out but I found it out and it's pretty simple you use a radio <coughs> filter and then you zero all this out and you bring down the dehaze and you get this soft misty light and it looks it looks very light and very soft and I used to do this to my iPhone photos and it made them look so much better made them look so much better made them usable and not they didn't look JPEGy anymore so that's very very helpful and what about the opposite so I wanted to know how to get a cool looking sky so if you use a filter and essentially you just do the opposite so you have to zero all these out again and then you up the dehaze instead of lowering it you'll get a very punchy sky so dehaze with maybe clarity saturation and maybe some contrast exposure if you wanted all of those are going to give you the tools for a really punchy sky if that's what you're after this is obviously way too saturated and contrasty and stuff but that's an example and and that's about it guys so that's what I wish I knew when I started Lightroom so they were the maybe not so obvious things about Lightroom and I hope you guys learnt a bit so leave a like comment below for more video ideas and I'll see you in the next one